I'm so desperate for Calvin to get his independence and try to be a normal boy as much as he can. And I tried to um, encourage him to do things he loves to do. Um, he loves to sing, he likes to act, he likes to dance. So he, that's something I want to build up for him because he enjoys it and he likes it. Because I'm a piano, if you don't like a when you wanna do. Because I'm a piano, if you know what, that's what you wanna do. Come on, beat me down. He will never be academic, that, that's for sure. Let's just put that on the side. <laughs> um, but if he can do something that can make him um, a person, yeah, I like that, I like that. My name is Calvin, and I go to Willowdean School. Calvin was born premature. He had complex medical needs and he had a life-limiting illness which is called pulmonary hypertension. This pulmonary hypertension is um, a, a disease which affects both the heart and the lung and it, it because of the high pressures in the lung makes the heart work harder and if you're not careful the, the heart works itself out and that's it. When I had Calvin I, I had nobody to help me. I have no family apart from my daughter. And at the time, Belinda was just six years old, seven, six years old. So that was my family to help me. I have had to struggle with Calvin basically through a lot, a lot. Calvin accessed our services in 2007 and um, so he has a congenital lung conditions which kind of limits his life around breathing and developing and he has other complex issues. Things just started evolving, the heart, the lung, the back, the speech was delayed, he has a brain problem because um, the corpus callosum did not develop properly. So basically um, this is a child I was looking at with lots and lots of, he was in so much pain, I was in so much pain and I had no answers for anything. At first, I didn't even know that Richard House really existed, that there are people out there in the country that can help you look after your child on top of what you're doing. They, they can guide you to look after your child. The, difference is so big between Uganda and United Kingdom, uh, I must say Calvin would not definitely have survived because the Uganda does not have the kind of um, medical facilities for a child like Calvin. We provide a holistic care services, so in terms of uh, medical aspect, Calvin has lots of consultants that we work alongside with, so it's not individual organisations working to support the family, so we, we will rely on the consultants to feed us information around the medical aspects of care, which then enables us to help Calvin and his mum when he comes in for respites, so for example, um, medications, um, his feeding, etc., which I think for parents that gives them an element of trust that you know what's happening with a child, you're in contact with the consultants to be able to do that. Um, therefore, you know, parents are more likely to leave their child in the respite if you know as professionals what you're doing. They were right on the go. They were able to take on the situation, welcome Calvin like it's their own. I felt really at home because before that, I think I was almost like running crazy because I have a child at home who is on almost like 20 medication. He has a colostomy bag to change. He has um, feeding problems. He has equipment left right that I have to operate by myself. And then I find Richard House that is able to give me some nights off to just have that extra sleep, to have that extra um, 
being me myself, being a mother, being myself as Maureen. And that was really, really very important to me. Um, the respite element of it, having supportive parents in particular with Kelvin's situation, is that it gives Kelvin a break from the daily lives of being in hospitals because the hospice element isn't exactly the same model as the hospital element of it. So he gets the medical aspect, but he gets to feel like he's a child and he's come for a holiday, for example. I like playing there. I like... I like... Dancing, I like. I like being meeting my friends there. Part of the hospice settings is that they provide other services. So we've got a play specialist that might work with him on a one to one. They might do some arts and crafts activities. He likes a lot of music, so I'm guessing that's what he would particularly want to do. So we have a music therapist that might work with him. We have uh, links with local organisations such as West Ham Football Clubs and corporate supporters and, as well. So they tap into us in terms of offers of either visits, so the footballers would come in, or any activities. So we are very fortunate actually where we are. We have uh, links with also, you know, if local celebrities want to come in, we make it into a family activity and give the opportunity for families to come in um, and meet them. It was fantastic to meet the Queen of England and Calvin had to had the, the honour to present her with the beautiful red roses. And what did she say? I say. What did she say? She said, what a beautiful boy you are. Ah! <laughs> and then I said, you're my lady. Okay. I want to be your girlfriend. Okay, we have to edit that one out yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> when you meet Kelvin and you're laughing so much that you've got tears coming down your eyes, they're brilliant. You know, those, are, those moments are priceless. And he's, he's such a bright and bubbly boy. You want to maintain that. You, you know, I think it would be sad if you lost that. Um, so how do we keep gauging with him that he's, he feels like he's a happy boy? This is a life you just have to take on a day at a time. And uh, with Calvin himself, he keeps me going because he's a little character. You mean, you forget, when you see him, you forget that he has all these things going around in his body. I have hope that, well, he's going to grow up and be able to be a man, that's my hope, and I have to keep that hope. I think I've had so many special moments with him that I have to keep going with him, I have to keep hold of him. He, he has to be here, he has to be here. He's my life and I just have to continue to be there for him. <laughs>